Unlock the power of your mind. This is Provocative Enlightenment with Eldon Taylor. Welcome to another hour dedicated to the notion of enlightenment, an hour for inquiry and reflection, all in our effort to understand exactly what enlightenment means and what it is to be enlightened. An hour devoted to exploring the edge of consciousness and all that is implied thereof, and an hour that recognizes the nature of the subjective experience as being at least as important as the objective reality we reside within. Indeed, an hour for those who are unflinching in their journey to the authentic self and willing to examine their deepest beliefs and perhaps challenge some of those old ideas about the world we live in and the people we have become. This is an hour where we strive to evaluate knowledge as inseparable from the total experience of reality. I'm Eldon Taylor, and this is Provocative Enlightenment. Now, each week I read uh, some of your letters as our way of paying homage to the role you play in helping us to shape our show and improve it in every way. Last week, our guest was Nick Lawrence, and we had a great discussion. Susan wrote, terrific show with Nick. Sue from the UK wrote, I enjoyed the show this week. I thought Nick Lawrence sounded like a very nice person. The great thing about the Internet is that we have the opportunity to listen to talk shows from all over the world nowadays. Hay House has opened up a whole new world to me, and what sets it apart is the fact that all of the presenters share one thing. They all seem to be authentic. Well, thank you, Sue, from all of us at Hay House Radio. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a very nice compliment. Sabine wrote, Greetings from Germany. Thank you all for doing this chat. It is really special if Eldon answers questions from the chat. I often listened and wished I could have asked something. The time the live show is on is just perfect, and the topics are always very interesting. For a foreigner, this is quite a show. Well, we're very glad that you like the show, Sabine, and thanks for writing. Uh, your chat room gets a lot of attention this week, Ravinder. Elaine wrote, We had another great time, Eldon. Ravinder and Andrea and the chat room came to life as it always does. I feel like Nick's radio work makes the world makes the world feel like a community, and so does this radio show and chat room. All right, everyone loves your chat room, Rav. You and Andrea must have entranced them somehow. What's the secret? Actually, there's no secret. We have a great group of people, so we talk about whatever you're discussing on the air. People who are too shy to call in with questions can post their questions there. And if we can't get those questions on the air, there's always some expert in the chat room who can, you know, offer their answers too. It, it's very enlightening. It is really good. And we, we, we have fun too. We now do tell have fun tell as well. me about the rewind on the chat room because a lot of our listeners, I get email from them that say, I, I can't catch the show live. It's too bad. I miss out on the chat room. But, <laughs> Well, we keep the chat room up for a week, but what I have just discovered, too, is I can keep the chat rooms up longer than that. So after the first week, after, you know, if you access the archives for the Provocative Enlightenment, you could go play a previous show, but you can also go replay the chat room as well. All right. So, so it's now up. So, Long but time. during during the week when it's re when the show's replayed, they can go to the chat Eldon room. Eldentaylor.com forward slash chat. See everything in the chat, including right. the movie, da 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 da. Well, one of these days, maybe it'll be the chat room and the radio show as opposed to the radio show in the chat room, <laughs> huh? All right. I don't think so. Okay, back to our letters. Yulia wrote, I am using some free programs already, mostly during my sleeping hours. Thank you so much. Thank you for your advice to start with a forgiving and letting go program. It all works and forgiveness tastes sweet and it feels like peace. Thank you. I would not have experienced this wonderful peace without inner talk and Eldon Taylor. Thank you, Yulia. And I will use your letter to remind our listeners of the many free programs available on my website. It's just a part of our own pay it forward program, including our forgiving and letting go title. Just go to eldentaylor.com and choose free programs from the left-hand navigation pane. Marsha wrote, thank you for making things available to those who want to get them to help themselves but are not in financial position to spend what so many programs require. Well, you're more than welcome, Marsha. Thank you for your feedback. And Ern wrote regarding my new book, What If? The Challenge of Self-Realization. And I want to thank you all. It's doing very well. Hi, Eldon. I received your book from Amazon yesterday. 
I read up to chapter 7. I have to say I've never read a book like this before. I went from one extreme emotionally to another, but now I think my analytical mind has come to the conclusion. You are right. My thoughts lead to this. It's all a science experiment, and we are the mice. Well put, Ern. That is, unless we choose to wake up and take responsibility for what's in our own minds. All right, that's all the time we're going to take for letters today, but I do invite you to opine by sending your email to Eldon <clears throat> at eldentaylor.com and or by joining me on Facebook. You can also just leave comments on my website. I do try to read all of your letters. Obviously, we can't get them all on the air, but they do impact our programming. I highly value your input. So once again, thank you, all of you, for your feedback and comments. Now to today's show. About three months ago, I received some information from a friend of mine. She is a medical doctor and an incredibly talented athlete. The information appeared to make some rather large claims, but they were somewhat obfuscated by ambiguities. So I put a phone call into her to find out more. She called me back that weekend, and we had a long conversation about an entirely new technology that she personally vouchsafed. I was impressed by her personal testimony and the potential inherent in what seemed to be a genuinely promising technology. So I shelled out a few bucks to test it on myself. Nowadays, everyone seems to be hustling some new wonder, this and that. So I must admit that despite our relationship, I remained, uh, you know, skeptical. However, after just one week, my skepticism was rapidly diminishing as I saw my energy increase for apparently no other reason. All right, now, I typically work long hours full of commitments and with many time constraints or deadlines. It's not unusual for me to begin my day on the computer somewhere around 5 a.m. and find myself going to bed around 11 p.m. During this period, I also try to get my daily workouts in, care for my livestock, as well as tend to my business. So it's not exactly like I was wanting for energy per se. Nevertheless, I found myself with much more vigor and feeling stronger and healthier at every level. My workouts increased to over an hour on the treadmill and the bike, and I still had plenty of energy for the Bowflex and the total gym. I had set myself a goal to lose 15 pounds just before I spoke with my friend, so her technology arrived rather synchronistically with my goal. Did it help? Well, like I said, my energy was up, so it was easier to extend the workouts. And we know that that alone can lead to weight loss. I did lose those 15 pounds and dropped those waist sizes in the process. I admit that I used my own inner doc technology to motivate me, but I believe the patches I received from my friend were of the greatest benefit. This could all just be a coincidence, another anecdotal testimony. But I don't think so. All right, you find something that you seems to be a real benefit. It seems to work for you very well. So what do you do? You tell your family and your friends. So I shared this with Ravinder, who promptly began using the energy technology. However, she had an ab reaction and found herself struggling with mood state, something that doesn't typically happen to her. So we got our friend again, who is a medical doctor, on the phone, and she gave Ravinder some possibilities to work on. And by the way, how's that going, Raph? It's going okay. We're still playing around with that, basically. All right. all right. So now all of this time I have been talking about a wonderful friend, but I have not introduced her. Dr. Karen Kan is a medical physician who began studying the Eastern healing arts due to her own debilitating illness. In her quest for healing, she discovered her natural intuitive abilities to help heal herself and others. Dr. Kahn's background is in family medicine. She graduated from McMaster's University in biochemistry and completed her medical degree at the University of Ottawa in Canada. She has been trained in clinical hypnosis, medical acupuncture, energy or Reiki healing, neuroacoustic sound therapy, and intuitive healings. Currently, she has an integrative medicine and acupuncture office where she sees patients who suffer from chronic medical illness. Now, in addition to that, Dr. Kan is an ice skater. In 2009, she and her partner, James Gann, 
entered the competition in the Adult Nationals Championship in nine events and won six gold, one silver, one fourth, and one fifth place medal. We actually have two guests today for joining Dr. Can to discuss this technology is the inventor and the CEO of LifeWave, David Schmidt. Uh, he's not only the CEO and the founder, uh, like I say, as the inventor, but he comes to us with a formal education in management information systems and biology from Pace University in Pleasantville, New York. His company, LifeWave, has been named among the fastest-growing private companies by Incorporated 5000 in 2010. So, all right, let's welcome our guests. Welcome to Provocative Enlightenment, Dr. David, uh, Dr. Karen Can and Mr. David Schmidt. Thank you, Eldon. Thank you, it's Eldon. A, it's a pleasure to have you both join us. <laughs> let's begin with you, Karen. You have a pretty incredible story, and it's all connected with your gold medal. So please share that story with us. Well, um, you know, a few years ago when I was recovering from my chronic illness and uh, I, I had gone the Western medical route and just found that the medications gave me a lot of side effects and I knew that people with my diagnosis just didn't get better. In fact, most of them became disabled, and I just wasn't willing to live with that, that I was going to be disabled the rest of my life. So I, I pretty much uh, went into studying complementary and alternative healing and uh, met a man at a sound healing conference, actually. Um, and he said, well, gee, I heard you were a nice skater. I said, yeah, yeah, I, I am. And, and uh, he heard about my diagnosis. And he said, well, I want you to try these little patches. And, of course, I was very skeptical. And he, I said, are there drugs in them? He's like, no, 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 no. I, I, I can't explain how they work, but there's no drugs. In fact, uh, you know, nothing goes through the body. And I thought, really? And so I was so intrigued. You know, I, I read as much as I could on it. I saw that, uh, well, in two weeks' time, I was going to be in my first international skating competition ever. And at the time, I was, you know, recovering from my illness, but still had a lot of problems with endurance, shortness of breath, muscle pain, that sort of thing. So I was game to kind of try anything that was safe and legal. So I made sure that the U.S. anti-doping and the world anti-doping agencies you know, had tested the patch and that there was no drugs. Um, and then I used them for the competition. And, and what was amazing was people kept, com the other adult skaters kept complaining about the altitude and complaining about the, you know, the, the ice conditions. And I just thought, wow, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, it just never really dawned on me that the patches were supporting my energy so much that I, I it just didn't bother me. And I had the best skating performance of my life. Uh, up to that point, I've had even better, better ones since, but up to that point, and I, and I won a gold medal for the U.S., um, and I thought, wow, there's there's really some things to this technology, and so I just kept experimenting with them, started using them every day, and just noticed that as weeks went by, I started doing the things I used to be able to do before I was sick, so before I could only work, you know, half an hour on the computer when I was sick, and I would get exhausted, completely exhausted. But then I was able to work, well, maybe that's not a good thing, but now I can work like four hours straight, you know, without getting up because I have so much energy. And uh, my skating just, you know, went through the roof. And um, James and I, you know, won our first ever um, pairs adult national championships in um, 2008. And then we competed again um, last year and won another gold medal. Um, and uh, as David keeps inventing new patches, we keep trying them. And amazingly, uh, when I think there, it can't get any better, it does. And so the most recent patch that David created, he asked James and I to test out last year. And uh, this was after our national win. Uh, and a lot of the flexibility came back in my body. So things I couldn't do before because of my illness, I can now do. So I just feel like I'm getting younger, which is, which is really cool. That's wonderful. And we'll get into getting younger, too, as we go to this show. But now... You're trained, I mean, first of all, you're a traditional licensed allopathic healthcare professional, physician, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're also trained uh, with a background in oriental uh, medicine, and it differs substantially from the allopathic mild that we have in the Western tradition, insofar that it looks at, uh, it looks at the body as, as, as a component, an aspect of the total being, the spiritual being, it is my understanding, kind of a body temple. So 
this is provocative enlightenment. I've got to ask you, Dr. Can, uh, how is wellness related to enlightenment or, for that matter, spiritual inquiry? Oh, well, that, that's a great question. You know, I think in the, in the past, and not so much now, um, there are many enlightenment practices, meditations, you know, that kind of thing with different cultures that really focused on the mind and kind of ignored the body, if, I, if we can put it very simply, it kind of ignored the body the body's comfort. Some of the practices were actually quite austere. So, so you really didn't pay attention to the body. But I think now the shift has come where we can see there's now a true integration where the body is the vessel, the process by which we go through our enlightenment. There's been so many cases, especially with somebody like me that's gone through chronic illness, that because of the chronic illness, I was given the opportunity to reach and get deeper into connection with divinity, to get into connection deeper with others. Um, For example, you know, my healer said to me, well, you know, it's not about, you know, you just being able to heal yourself, even though, you know, you can heal other people. She said, you know, your path may be to be able to learn to receive from others. And so if you weren't ill, you'd never have the opportunity to receive. And she also said, you know, and the other thing, too, is... um, Maybe that was your contract to come down here. Maybe you can be more compassionate because now that you've suffered, you understand what it feels like to be so tired that you can't lift your head off the pillow and then you cry when you walk to the bathroom because you're in so much pain. You know how that feels, so you have the opportunity to then be compassionate for other people going through it, to hold that space for them, to love them, you know, and to be accepting of them because you had to learn to be accepting of yourself and be forgiving of yourself. And I think that's how the body can really help us go deeper and deeper into spirit, into the enlightenment, instead of being separate from it. So it's a true integration of the upper you know, energy centers, the upper chakras, the lower chakras, which is physical, denser body, and really meeting in the middle, which is, which is the heart. I totally concur. As Socrates said, healthy mind, healthy body, and, you know, we don't have a spiritual advancement without an awareness, and I guess that comes down to something we call mind. So you're preparing to set the stage to bring David in here and explain these patches, but before we do that, uh, you're talking about chakras, you're talking about meridians. For our audience who may not be familiar with that, You use the patches in the meridian system, the acupressure points of the body. Explain what that is and and why that's important to understand. Well, you know, it's a very um, ancient uh, knowledge and believed to be Chinese in origin, although it may be even older than 3,000 years ago, um, where they felt that it came from China. But there are these energy channels that run in our bodies. In the past, in the Western world, we didn't believe these existed. But now there's actually studies showing, you know, that indeed these things do exist. You can actually measure them. And as as some people, scientists have said, you can measure it, then it's real. So we have these energy meridians in the body. And when the flow of energy or chi, some of the, uh, um, in Chinese, chi means, you know, energy. Um, In the Indian tradition, it's prana. So when the chi is flowing in these meridians and they're balanced, um, most people have heard of yin and yang, so masculine and feminine energies, the yin and yang, when the yin and yang and the chi flow are balanced, then we experience good health. And what we're realizing now with actually a lot of modern technology that we can examine things is that the energy system of the body, uh, if it becomes disordered or dysregulated or unbalanced, it precedes long before there is actually a physical illness. So there can be decades of energy imbalance before finally someone gets a diagnosis or an illness. So, you know, what we're trying to do in the energy healing realm is to, you know, catch it at the earliest point possible and say, hey, you know what, you have some energy regulation issues, imbalance, and we can see you going down this road, you know, which could lead to illness. Well, let's let's prevent that. Let us, you know, shift how, how this is. And so when People's energy fields are um, fuller, have more chi, the meridians are balanced. They generally feel, you know, much more energy. They feel more focused. They feel happier. 
And, you know, so many people I've seen in my office where, you know, I've trying all these different mental techniques over the decades, you know, trying to get them out of their depression and we're counseling and we're coaching and we're, you know, doing all this stuff. And, but, you know, if we just shifted the energy field in the body, they naturally started to get better from their mood issues. So it's really, it was yeah. really quite interesting. I can remember when you say that the Curlians back in the 60s, 70s, the Russian scientists using Curlian photography or what we know today as electrophotography to um, prognosticate disease uh, based on uh, electrophotography of the energy centers in the body, what, uh, what science likes to call bioplasma. All right, so <clears throat> we have a patch. And the patch has no chemical substance in it, no no medicine per se. Uh, it, it's drug free. We put we put this patch on uh, some point within the meridian system. David, what on earth is in this patch that does the magic? <laughs> well, that is a fair question. Uh, the patches contain organic materials. They're actually crystals. And these crystals are manufactured from uh, amino acids and sugars in water-based solutions. And what they do is they emit light. Now, this is a, a well-known biological phenomenon that light will cause specific reactions within the human body. Uh, what most people are familiar with is we go out in the sun and uh, light will cause our body to make vitamin D, or another wavelength of light will cause our body to get a tan. So uh, we use this principle. Uh, it's actually over the past 10 years been studied uh, under the name photobiomodulation, which is just a, a big, long name that means that light will cause reactions within the body. So uh, these patches uh, contain organic crystals that emit specific wavelengths of light that trigger specific reactions within the body. So instead of having to take a vitamin pill to elevate your antioxidant levels, now you can apply a patch and this form of phototherapy will elevate a specific or uh, series of antioxidants uh, within the body. Uh, and the results are, are very, very quick. Uh, with our pain relief product, as an example, we get 50% or better pain relief within just two or three minutes. So there's significant advantages to working with the biophysics of the body as compared to just the biochemistry. Okay, now you filed a patent on uh, your product. Um, and when we get back after the break, I want to discuss that with you. But I understand the patent was denied. Have you reapplied? Well, uh, we're going through the typical cycle uh, that you go through when a patent is uh, is up for review by the patent office. Uh, actually, the reason uh, why the patent officer, uh, examiner rather, initially denied it was because they thought we were putting uh, chemicals into the body, that it was a simple transdermal patch. Uh, but now the uh, patent, fortunately, is in front of the patent commission, and uh, it's being looked at again. So uh, All right, hopefully that'll, that'll get issued. We'll take that up when we come back from the break, but that's great. You're listening to Provocative Enlightenment. We're discussing a new technology called LifeWave. There are links in our chat room that will lead you to Dr. Can's site and more LifeWave information, or you can go directly to quantum-antiaging.com. So be sure to check it out. If you're in the chat room, enjoy the short video during the break. We'll be right back after these words from some of our friends. So don't go away. Confusion, deception, manipulation, feeling a bit controlled, lost. Learn how you can take back control of your life through proven techniques in Eldon Taylor's revised edition of Choices and Illusions. This New York Times bestseller is a guidebook to your journey to self-actualization filled with practical, real-life solutions backed by scientific studies and guaranteed to awaken your inner genie. Get your copy today from all bookstores. Have you talked to yourself lately? What does that inner voice say? Are you constantly hearing negative feedback? Ready for a change? Inner talk. Eldon Taylor's patented subliminal technology can do just that. Change your inner self-talk. 
Turn off the negative by replacing it with positive affirmations. Inner talk has been researched at universities such as Stanford and by governments around the world and has been proven effective at priming your self-talk. Armed with a new positive outlook, you'll find everything becomes easier. From losing weight to stop smoking, giving presentations to riding horses, learn new things to being a powerful salesperson. Choose your title for change today. Visit www.innertalk.com. That's I-N-N-E-R-T-A-L-K.com. Innertalk.com. Unlock the power of your mind. This is Provocative Enlightenment with Eldon Taylor. Welcome back. If you just joined us, we're discussing a new technology called LifeWave. But before we get back to today's show, I want to invite you to like our Facebook fan page for Provocative Enlightenment Radio. As a fan of the show, you will receive special announcements and incentives from time to time. This is our way of thanking you for your support. I would also like to invite you to join me on Facebook while you're there, and of course you can follow me on Twitter. Some of you have learned of the free programs and limited opportunities as a result of connecting with us through our social networking applications. One way to know these things in advance is to become a fan of Provocative Enlightenment or a friend of mine on Facebook. Okay, now let's get back to the show. Before the break, we were discussing with the inventor of LifeWave, the patent. And David, the reason I ask about that is if you do a, a, a search on the Internet on, on anything today, you get all kinds of stuff that comes back. And, and so, I've got, you know, I'm going to have to ask you a difficult, you know, question. And let me make it clear as to why first. I have been critical of the absence of a reasonable vetting process in some interviews that, that just by the nature of the fact that they bring a person on the show and say nothing is a quasi sort of endorsement. So you've already heard me provide a personal testimonial, but I'm equally aware of some information that our audience should be able to consider. In other words, I don't want to knowingly omit from our interview information that may be relevant to what we are discussing. So as such, David, there are questions on the Internet about your patent. I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you also are aware, as I am, that there are lots of people shouting all kinds of things about everything out there. Uh, and just because somebody says it's a scam doesn't mean it's a scam. I am very aware of, uh, say, Dr. Ken was speaking earlier of acupuncture. I can cite almost chapter and verses of different research that was published by our government saying that there was no such thing as these meridian systems, only to have the medical evidence overwhelmingly show otherwise. So with that introduction, here we go. <clears throat> there are some condemning remarks about you and your patches made by Worldwide Scam Network, and they, they're all over the Internet. Specifically, they quote, they steal your money, your life, and your reputation using nothing more than scientific-sounding techno-babble and breathless testimonials. To that, David, what do you say? What is your answer? Well, gosh, uh, <laughs> I am so happy that you asked that question. Uh, when we first launched our company uh, back in 2004, we received tremendous amounts of criticism, and people didn't know what the technology was. Uh, we were launching as a network marketing company because we found that a face-to-face -face selling business model worked the best for demonstrating our products. Uh, but then what happened was once people saw that we did have uh, clinical studies, and then we were getting athlete endorsements. We were getting, uh, we got a wonderful endorsement from Suzanne Summers, who's now included us in three of her New York Times best-selling books. Uh, people began to realize that there was science behind this, and this was legitimate. Uh, today, uh, now nine years later, after the beginning of the company, we have uh, 43 clinical studies that we've completed that show the science behind this. And in fact, uh, we have seven clinical studies that have been published in peer review. So even though uh, the FDA and the FTC only require one clinical study to actually go to market with a product, uh, we've continued on with our research because uh, we, this has allowed us to develop new products that uh, imp dramatically improve quality of life as well as build on 
uh, the enormous database of information that we already have. So this commitment to continued scientific research has really proven our case uh, that our products are real and that they do work. And, and I'm glad I asked that question for precisely the same reason you are. And that's, you know, listen, if you're, if you're listening to this show, uh, obviously you're an Internet-oriented kind of an individual. And if you search LifeWave, one of the first things that comes up uh, it is, is this nonsense that it, most of it is very old postings, but as you know, everything survives on the Internet. So <clears throat> in fairness, you have had, uh, you've had both sides of the story. Let's go back to you for a second, Dr. Karen. As a holistic doctor and acupuncturist, uh, our bodies are self-healing mechanisms, so why don't we heal ourselves instead of relying on all sorts of therapies, including these little patches? Oh, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Well, you know, I get that a lot in my practice, you know, people saying, well, gee, am I going to get addicted to acupuncture? I'm going to be addicted to these patches. Um, I think what we don't realize is that even though our bodies are a self-healing mechanism, the rate at which we heal really depends on how we take care of our bodies and the environment that we put it through. Um, it's not the best analogy, but I can give you the analogy of uh, imagining your body as, you know, a, a really fine race car or a Maserati, for example. Now, if you owned a Maserati and you pretty much kept it in the garage so it didn't get dusty, it didn't get driven maybe once or twice a year, and you, know, you don't have to do that many filter changes, you probably don't have to wash it that much, you don't have to get you know, that many upgrades, you know, so to speak, it'll probably keep and not rust, right? I mean, it'll probably keep really well. But if you go out and you race your Maserati every single weekend, it's a dirt track, you take it to the ball game, you take it everywhere, it's gone through sleet, ice, snow, salt, you know, the whole bit, you're going to have to do a lot more work to really get that Maserati back into shape. And although cars don't heal themselves, what I was trying to say with the analogy is that we don't realize what we put ourselves through, what we ask of our bodies. And so we don't take care of our bodies. And so this can go on for decades and decades. And what I see is people coming through my door, you know, at age 40. Well, actually now it's like age 20. But, you know, before it was like age 40 and they're like, everything's falling apart. I was fine. I was healthy. And then, boom, I now have hot flashes. I've got this rash. I've got this. I've got that. I've got arthritis. I'm on all these meds. What's going on? They think it's a sudden issue, but it's not because we know their energy system has not been supported for all those 40 years because we put ourselves through stress. I mean, look, you and I love our computers. I mean, we do a lot of writing. So we're in front of this electromagnetic field, you know, every day for hours and hours and right. hours. I'm attached to my cell phone because it's part of my business. I wouldn't want to give it up. But, you know, I've had to use protective devices in addition to the patches because I'm very electrosensitive. So people don't realize the food they eat, you know, the electromagnetic field in their everyday life, you know, the toxic air that we breathe, the cell towers, you know, in in, um, uh, in the vicinity of, of where we live, they all make a stress on our bodies. So if we're going to live in the modern world, then our bodies need some sort of support mechanism. You know, some people ask me, well, how can you spend so much money you know, every month on, you know, uh, organic food? Isn't that expensive? Like, you know, why do you spend so much money on supplements or patches and that kind of thing? And I answer them, because I love my lifestyle. You know, I skate. I push my body to the limit for its 44 years. I do stuff that nobody else dares to do at my age because life is a joy and I want to live it that way. So I, because I push my body so much and because I love what I do and I love my work and I work really hard, um, I'm choosing that lifestyle. So to balance that choice, I'm going to use these other tools so that my body's in the positive, you know, repair mode rather than the breakdown mode. Does that make yeah, sense? And, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, pursuing your automobile analogy we're going to pay for it one way or another. We either do it in maintenance, preventative maintenance as we go along, or we do it in major repairs. So, uh, But, you know, with that said, you know, you, you suggested a cute little question. We had a question, by the way, out of the chat room from Kevin, and I'll get to their questions in a minute uh, about how old you were, but I think you just answered that. You're 44 years young. Uh, everyone that saw you in the chat room uh, well, saw that film it. of it. They're not going to believe that you're... You know, 
Well, well, at any rate, you don't look 44. I'm looking for the words as to how to say that, but there we go, all right? <laughs> all right, now listen, the patches, I mean, they're just going to put you out of business, aren't they, Doc? <laughs> yeah, that's great. You know, I, 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 I do, you know, sometimes people say, well, why don't you, you know, talk more with your local, you know, chiropractor, massage therapist and, and teach them, you know, how to use the patches and, and you know, to help more people. And I have to be really careful because I, you know, in the past, just being very naive, I, you know, just, I was stepping on people's toes and not really realizing it because my frame of reference is, well, wouldn't you want somebody to be self-empowered to, to heal themselves? And although what I do is, is a benefit. What I realize is the most important benefit that people come from physically seeing me and getting treated by me is not the needles I put in them because I found LifeWay patches to be uh, as helpful, if not more, in many cases, but the relationship that I have with that person, listening, you know, um, you know, putting their life in perspective, in a spiritual perspective, that's what they're really paying me for. They think it's for acupuncture, <laughs> you know, but it's really right. for the spiritual piece, and that's what they get the most out of. Because the patches, of course, David's always inventing new things, but the patches, you know, are a wonderful tool, um, but it's not a relationship with a human being. And so, um, yes, there's, you know, I see the writing on the wall. Things really are shifting very, very quickly. A lot of what I do as a technician, as an acupuncturist, is going to be taken over by devices and things like patches that, um, you know, will be uh, the technician for us. But I realize that I'm, you know, never going to really be out of a job, quote unquote, because people are going to need the next step, the deeper perspective in their lives, as, you know, as they heal their physical bodies. Um, and they have enough energy now to process some of the mental, emotional, spiritual aspects of themselves, uh, then that's where I can come in again as, you know, yeah. as health you'll, healer. You'll truly never be out of a job. I think we're going to see that the whole allopathic model begins to incorporate the importance of, of just what you said, that, that spiritual aspect of the human condition, that, that feeling aspect, not, not just treating mechanically. David. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's let's talk a minute about this photobiomodulation because you have different products, and as you indicated, you know um, this organic wavelength, the, the the biophysics model that you use. Obviously, these crystals must be tuned to different frequencies. How do you discover the frequency, and how do you replicate that? Well, that's a fair question, and uh, that actually happens to be one of our trade secrets. Uh, <laughs> but years ago, <laughs> so you asked the right question. Uh, you know, uh, going back uh, 10, 12 years, DARPA actually started to investigate this phenomena. And uh, what they were interested in was phototherapy. And uh, they were looking at uh, troops uh, that were having their retinas damaged by laser light. And uh, somebody got the idea, I believe the researcher's name is Whalen, uh, to take the frequency of light or wavelength, if you prefer, of light that damaged the retina from the laser beam and then turn the energy way down uh, to one one hundredth of its original power. And what they discovered was that using the same wavelength of light that actually damaged the tissue uh, at lower power, that same wavelength of light could actually regenerate the damaged tissue. And this phenomenon is called photo repair. So scientists began uh, investigating this mechanism, and there's lots of information out there now in the scientific community. So what's known as an example is that when you get into the red band of light, uh, or you get into the band of light around uh, 600 uh, to uh, 700 nanometers, uh, one of the things that you see is energy production in the cells increase. Uh, specific bands of orange light, you'll see the same phenomena. Uh, so now you can go to a, um, a dermatologist in La Jolla or Beverly Hills, and you can put your face into a bank of orange lights, and this will cause the uh, collagen to repair by elevated energy production in the mitochondria of the cells. So uh, we use this type of scientific information to evaluate uh, biological systems. Uh, And specifically what I do is I look at photoreceptors that are along the cell membrane and uh, within the organelles of the cells. So we have uh, photoreceptors in the mitochondria. We have photoreceptors along the cell membranes. 
and they can be uh, just as easily activated by uh, biochemicals like drugs or vitamins as they can be activated by energy, uh, and in this case, specific uh, frequencies of light. So uh, what we do is we will look at uh, first what is exactly that we want to do. Uh, so we'll identify, uh, let's say, a biomolecule like glutathione, and uh, glutathione is the body's master antioxidant. So we wanted to be able to elevate this antioxidant without having to take a pill. Uh, so what we did was we looked at the receptors that were responsible for elevating glutathione and uh, were able to determine uh, with a biophysical model what wavelengths of light would activate that receptor. Uh, we then constructed crystals, organic crystals, that were capable of emitting those specific wavelengths of light for activating those specific receptors. And uh, now, you, so you can take this patch, uh, you can put it on your body, and within seconds, uh, your body produces a bioelectrical uh, response to the patch uh, that signals the cells to elevate glutathione. And uh, we've proved this uh, through about eight clinical studies where we measure the bioelectrical uh, effect on the tissue, uh, we measure the um, uh, the thermal effect on the tissue through reduction in inflammation, and of course, we do blood, urine, and saliva testing to show uh, that glutathione levels are increasing. Okay, if I, you know, if I were to be skeptical, where would I find these clinical studies, David? Well, you go to our website. Uh, that's the best place to start. And mm -hmm. uh, when you go to our land on our homepage, uh, which is LifeWave.com, you click on the products button. And then under products, you'll see a submenu that says research, and you click on it, and uh, you'll see we have a whole complement of studies there. Uh, some of the studies have been published in peer review. Others are out for publishing. Others we decided not to publish in peer review. Um, so we have a combination of open-label studies, and we have a combination of uh, double-blind studies there as well. Okay. And the peer-reviewed journals that uh, the studies have uh, appeared in, could you give me a couple? Sure. Uh, one of the first ones uh, that was published was in the IEEE, and uh, what we wanted to do was examine uh, the effects of our patches on heart rate variability. And this was important because if you're going to sell a health product, especially an energy-based health product, you want to know that the product is safe. Uh, so this, the goal of this study was to show that the product not only was uh, safe on the human heart, but there was also an efficacious response as well. Uh, a little bit more recently, we had a clinical study that was published in peer review in the International Federation for Medical and Biological Engineering, and uh, this was on our glutathione patch. Uh, this was very interesting because we used a uh, piece of equipment from Europe called electro-interstitial scanning, and uh, this uh, specific piece of equipment will measure the bioelectrical effects in the kidneys, in the liver, in the heart, uh, in specific regions of the brain, like the pituitary. So we could actually monitor uh, when people went from not using the patches to using the patches for a month, uh, what the benefits of that were. And we saw bioelectrical uh, organ function actually improve in the body uh, from the use of our glutathione patch. Okay, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I understand you correctly, uh, implicit in what you're saying, I could maybe use a patch uh, for a period of time. Let's just say I used a patch for 30 days, and then I stop using the patch. My, my body should, the frequency should have changed. The signal system should have changed. My body should have a self-perpetuating cycle that would follow that until I did something to deteriorate it. Is, is, have I got that right? Yeah, you're partly correct. You're on, you're on the right track in the sense that when, uh, you know, acupuncture, you made a very, very interesting statement that even the U.S. government has put out negative things about acupuncture. And what's funny about that is that 1.8 billion people use acupuncture as their primary means of health care. So in most of the world, acupuncture has been accepted for, you know, in this case, thousands of years has been quite legitimate. But when someone goes in for acupuncture therapy and a needle is, insert, is inserted into a meridian point, and let's say we're trying to stimulate the lungs, uh, that, uh, that stimulation will hold itself for a period of time. 
So someone can go to the acupuncturist, you know, once a week or once a month, uh, whatever is necessary. But the the uh, communications channel in the body that we're stimulating with the needle can stay balanced for a period of time. Now, if you have a significant event occur in your life, like a uh, automobile accident or you have a significant amount of stress at work, that can cause to debalance the communication system in the body. So the benefits of these patches is that when you wear them regularly, they can help to maintain a reduced level of stress and help to maintain a state of balance through the body. So your your body will stay accommodated to the signal for a period of time, but unfortunately, uh, situations in our life such as daily stress can debalance the body, and that's why these technologies are so valuable. Right. So they're not necessarily addictive, but we do find that we don't live in a vacuum, and so you may... You know, you may want to obtain some new energy when you find some new blockages, I think. All right. Listen, uh, Dr. Can, we, I, I'm going to come to you with a question out of our chat room. The chat room really loves it when I get these questions out of there for them. Uh, Mod Girl would like to know, and this is her question, could Dr. Can give us some insight as to how she applied the patches, where on her body, and how she wore them? Um, well, you know, as uh, as David has created more patches, I, I, I'm my own best guinea pig, I like to say. Uh, I'll try them on myself before I'll try them on patients or anyone else. And so my current um, uh, protocol, so to speak, is that I know there are certain energy meridians that I tend to get out of balance. And for me, it's liver. Now, if you didn't know what you know, energy meridians out of balance, what we normally have you do is, for example, with the energy patches, uh, actually with all the patches, um, aside from the pain one, um, we actually have you rotate through the points that are suggested in the brochure. Those have been tested to be the most likely uh, beneficial points in most people. And then we ask people for feedback after they've done one or two rounds of each of those points in the brochure to see what feels the best for them. For example, the energy patches, uh, unless you're an athlete like me and working out, um, a lot of people are, you know, expecting it to be like caffeine. So they they expect to feel like buzzed and bouncing off the walls and energy. Well, that's not real energy. Uh, I tell my patients that's false energy. Real energy actually feels like calm, focused, you know, peaceful. And when you have to do a workout, you have the energy there. Like I know for me, I just have a greater endurance. My muscles don't ache or or spasm up on me. Uh, I can push a lot more. Um, So I use the energy patches daily, um, and I do rotate through my three or four favorite points. And I use the Eon, which is our newest patch, which David had asked James and I, my partner James and I, to uh, test out because I saw a huge increase in my uh, athletic uh, uh, abilities as well as um, increasing flexibility in my tissues. And guess what? The acupuncture meridians happen to be in the cleavages between the muscle in the tissue that's called the fascia, and that's what became looser and looser on me, um, and that was very tight because of my illness. So as time goes on, I can see parts of my body just loosening up, and so I can now do a back bend uh, again like I used to, you know, 15 years ago um, where I had stopped being able to do that because of my illness. So I used the energy patches on my favorite points. For me, it's uh, liver three, which is not All right. We're running out of time, ah. and, and we could do this for, for at least another hour, but I want everybody to know, Karen, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, well, they can contact me on either my uh, blog or my replicated site, which is um, the LifeWave site. So um, I've got uh, the quantum anti-aging, so quantum-antiaging.com, so that's my blog, and I put up uh, – um, just post the things that I've discovered, how I use the patches, you know, that sort of thing. And then right. the uh, to find out more information on the research, um, my other page is the acupuncturepatches.com. And, of course, you can just go to lifewave.com, and there you're directly connected to David's parent site. We, I genuinely appreciate both of you coming here. Uh, I encourage all of our listeners to, to take a look uh, at... At what LifeWave has to offer, I myself have been very happy with it. Okay, as I say, we've come to the end of another hour. If you've enjoyed our show, we'd love to hear from you. Until next week, same time, same place, remember, 
believing in yourself always matters.